Wi-Fi is evolving and most up-to-date routers you buy today are Wi-Fi 7 certified, which means they usually offer three frequency bands, 2.4 GHz, 5 GHz, and 6 GHz. If you've been following my channel, you've definitely heard me talk about these bands before. And if you're new here, welcome, and hopefully by the end of this video, you will have a much clearer idea of what these numbers actually mean. Wi-Fi originally started just with the 2.4 GHz band, back in the early days of Wi-Fi 1 through Wi-Fi 3. One of the most iconic routers of that era was the Linksys WRT54G, that classic blue and black box that only supported the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi. Now, as demand for faster speeds and less congestion grew, the 5 GHz band came into play. Technically, it was first introduced with the 802.11a standard, but it wasn't until Wi-Fi 4 that 5 GHz really gained traction and became widely adopted. It offered more bandwidth, cleaner channels, and better performance compared to 2.4 GHz. And today, with the Wi-Fi 6E and Wi-Fi 7 technology, we also have the 6 GHz band, designed for even higher speeds, lower latency, and much more capacity to handle the growing number of devices in our homes. Let's start with the 2.4 GHz. This band has the longest range and penetrates walls the best which makes it ideal for things like IoT devices, smart plugs, cameras, or just covering larger homes. But the downside is that it is very crowded. With only three non-overlapping channels, it often suffers from interference coming from neighbors' routers, microwaves, or even baby monitors. So while 2.4 GHz is great for coverage, it usually delivers the slowest speeds. Now let's move on to 5 GHz. Here you get much faster speeds and many more channels than 2.4 GHz, which helps avoid interference. It is a great choice for streaming, gaming, and video calls. On the other hand, the signal doesn't travel as far and walls block it more easily, since higher frequency naturally have shorter range. There is also one special thing about 5 GHz. Parts of it are shared with radar systems. That means if your router is using one of those channels and radar is detected in your area, it has to switch frequencies, which can cause temporary disconnects. This is especially noticeable if you live near an airport. I won't dive into all the details here, but I do have a dedicated video on that. Check the link in the top right corner or in the video description if you're interested. A good example of a dual band wireless router that supports both 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz is the ASUS RTAX86U, which I have reviewed on this channel before. And in my opinion, it is still a very capable Wi Fi 6 router even today. And finally, there is 6 GHz, which came with Wi Fi 6E and Wi Fi 7. The big advantage here is that it is like having a brand new highway for your devices. It offers tons of clean channels, very little congestion, and extremely fast speeds, which makes it perfect for low latency tasks like gaming, virtual reality, augmented reality, or even high resolution streaming. But the trade off is that the range is the shortest of all three bands, and it doesn't go through walls very well. On top of that, since it is still new, a lot of older phones, tablets, and laptops don't even support it. A good example here is the ASUS RTBE92U, a Wi-Fi 7 router that supports all three bands, 2.4 GHz, 5 GHz, and 6 GHz. But unless your devices are actually 6 GHz capable, you won't see the benefit. So what's the takeaway? Each band has its role. Use 2.4 GHz for range and simple devices. Use 5 GHz for faster everyday use like streaming and gaming. Use 6 GHz if you have newer devices and want the fastest, cleanest connection, ideally when you are in the same room as the router, with minimal walls in between. 
And that brings us to something really important, which is designing your network the right way. And one key part of that is simply using the right band for the right purpose. That's how you get the best mix of coverage, speed and reliability. I hope this helped you understand the real differences between these Wi-Fi bands and more importantly how to actually use them in your own setup. Of course there is a lot more detail behind each band and each generation of Wi-Fi but that is beyond the scope of this video and it is something I have covered and will continue to cover in other videos on this channel. Check out the video description for some useful links and if you found this helpful give the video a like and subscribe for more practical networking tips. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.